Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be making a chain, essentially from scratch. This is the chain in question, but we are going to be making a Figaro chain. Figaro chains are thought to have originated in honor of the main character in the Barber of Seville and the marriage of Figaro, the main character Figaro. <laughs> These are two very popular operas in the 18th century of Italy, which is where this chain originated. Um, it is basically said that this chain is made in honor of this main character, or at least named after this main character. So this chain is probably a theater kid's ideal piece of jewelry. <laughs> Again, it originated in Italy. This type of jewelry is essentially thought of as a male chain, a men's jewelry chain, but uh, as of late it has been a lot more popular for women to be wearing. It's much like a curb chain in the way that it's fashioned, it's links that are twisted to where they lay flat. So long oval link, one, two, three, long, long oval link, one, two, three, long oval link, uh, three round links and one oval link, repeat. So we'll be making this one today. Um, this will be my second chain that I've made. I made one chain before, which I've showed you guys before. It was my practice project. It sucks. It's not, it's not good. It's wearable, but it's not pretty. I have a lot more confidence in making this today just because I have been practicing my soldering and I feel like this will be really good. This is actually going to be a gift for my boyfriend. We're about to have our fourth year anniversary and actually our one year anniversary of doing long distance. I moved from Louisville, Tennessee to Noonan, Georgia on our anniversary. Um, he ended up coming down and we spent our anniversary here and you know, he, he helped move me in with my parents and everything. Um, which was very kind of him to do. He is not a very big jewelry person, but he has expressed that the only type of jewelry he could ever see himself wearing would be in the future a wedding band or a chain. And so we'll be making him the chain. Um, I've already kind of started, but I wanted to go in depth on how I made the links exactly and then show you some of my soldering process, just um, using techniques in past videos that I've created to show you my process on making this, which I've already kind of started. If you can kind of see here, I've kind of started soldering it. I've only gone like an inch into this 23 inch chain. Um, I'm going for a 22 inch chain because um, it gives a nice little level. It's about this long, actually. I think this is actually 22 inches. I feel like a 22 inch chain would look best on him, but because it is a fashion where you twist the metal and it kind of tightens up, it kind of shrinks when you're twisting a little bit. So I'm giving an inch leeway to allow for a little extra room whenever I am twisting it to lay it flat, that it'll be long enough. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Cause this is like my, this is my first Figaro curb chain style type of making. The one that I made before was a paper clip chain, which is literally just like a link on a link. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so now I'll show you how I have been making my links. Here are all of our tools. Starting off, we have two types of pliers. These are both regular nose pliers. Um, these are just regular pliers. We have a pair of flush cutters round 20 gauge wire, which is the wire that I have been using for these links, um, a random drill bit, and a random bezel rocker. My method of making the oval links and the circular links start out with me getting my piece of wire. I take this little drill bit. If you saw the video of things to know before buying Jewelry Metals Edition, you would have seen a bracelet that I had made a while ago. This is the same process I did, except the pieces weren't soldered together. So I basically just start wrapping it around, make sure it's really tight. I will actually go in with some nylon pliers just to, again, make it a very tight, uniform fit uh, to make sure all of the circles are the same size. Much like that. As you can see, it has been coiled, and then I just kinda, again, make sure it's straightened off. Make sure the end is sitting right where the end of the coiled version is, that way you're not wasting any wire. All right, I pop it off, and I start cutting. So the easiest way for me to do this is I will cut one off using the flush end. Anytime you use flush cutters, only one end will end up being flush. The inner side will cut in a like pointed way. So you want to use your end where it lays flat to get the flat effect. So the edge of this last little coiled piece is not flat. So I am gonna take my flush cutters and just cut the little edge to where it sits flat. All right, 
So now it is a flat side that we're working with. Um, and then you wanna flip it over, cut again, so that it cuts a fully flush O-ring and it leaves you less work later on. So now when I connect this to the other O-rings, I have less work to do because all I have to do is just shut it and it lays uh, flush next to each other. I take the flush side of my cutters and I hit it on the end of this coil, make it flat, go back on the other side, flip it and cut. That way both sides are a flush fit. And with that process, it leaves you a nice flat flush edge to start working on the other pieces. So now we have some circular links. And so now we're gonna make the oval links. I had attempted making a oval link with this by instead of cutting it every single loop, I cut it every two loops, flattened it out, and it made an oval. When I had tried wrapping it once around this versus twice around this, it ended up being the exact same size. So I just use this because it's easier to use. So again, I just pretty much exactly copy that process where I make the oval links. So I wrap it around. And again, I use the same process where I cut the edge flat. So I take my little pliers. These are just regular looking pliers. I take these, take my oval link. I put it about halfway down the middle of my plier and I just squish it flat. Then you're gonna wanna take the sides and push those up flat as well. In the end of this process, it'll look just like a paper clip. So you see it kind of looks like a paper clip. Then you're just gonna wanna fold the edges inward on both sides and adjust as needed. As you can see, we have started to build our chain link by link. So we have three circular links attached to an oval one and we will just continue this process. So here is the start out of our Figaro chain. And now since I showed you guys how exactly to fashion your links and get them set up, you pretty much just want to copy this process over and over again until you get to your desired length. Alrighty, Roo. So I've already soldered some of this chain a little bit, but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth of how I'm doing so. When I would solder, the actual solder would melt to the bottom and it would solder the links shut so I couldn't move them. That has happened a couple times, but how I combat that is I just take my torch, I lightly fan it over it just so the solder melts slightly to where it just becomes a little bit more liquid-like. And then I start, I of course, I don't do it with my fingers. I use my little tongs. And I just kind of hold it. I kind of just hold where it's like stuck and I just kind of wiggle it so that it stays moving. And as it's continuing to move, I take away my heat so that it doesn't stay connected shut, if that makes sense. So I like to put the extra length of what I need to solder over to the side. I have my link held up by my third arm so that it gives a little bit more space and visual ground for me to work with. I have a ton of solder chips 
or not really chips, cut up pieces from my solder wire right here that I'm just gonna be picking on with my pick, of course, and just flux the very top where the seam is. You don't wanna flux the whole thing because the flux is what gives the flow. So I added a little, little itty bitty bit of flux. You're gonna to wanna to heat it up so the, oh, you wanna heat it up so your flux bubbles. There you go. So I'm getting a little warm. You wanna heat up your third arm too. That way it doesn't take away any heat from the right side that I have connected on this link. I'm gonna take one of the little solder chips, melt it so it stays on my solder pick. Again, heat up the seam and I can see exactly where I need to place it. Place it on top. Just kind of let it melt into the seam. Okay, perfect. And so now to speed up this process, I pick it up with my, oh, there we go. I pick it up with my tongs and quench it. So this is just a, a bowl of water at room temp. And so quenching it allows me to grab it right after adding flame to it so that I don't burn my hands. Um, and then I can make sure that the link is soldered perfectly and I don't have to worry about it breaking open. It looks pretty good. So I don't know if you guys can see what just happened, but the solder, okay, I fixed it. So let me explain what happened. So the solder will flow to the hottest side. It pretty much will follow your flame. So because the third arm is metal, it does take some of the heat away from this right side that it's holding, which means this left side has a lot more heat than the right side. So you wanna kind of favor the side that your third arm holds it on. Um, what I had did is I didn't, I didn't favor this side enough so that the solder started to flow down the side. Um, I pulled away as soon as I could, that way it hardened so I could re-add my heat to it. I take my pick and I kind of just swipe the solder over to the side so that it gets in between both both of the ends of this link. That way it is a flush connection and it stays shut and it's not gonna break open. Okay, 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 okay. So as I was saying before, sometimes your links can, the solder can flow down your link, especially when you're working with smaller things and the links will get stuck together. That happened right here. Let me see if I can show you close up. See how it's just sticking out? So I'm gonna show you how I try to fix that. So you wanna take it by the link that it's connected to and I'm just gonna heat it up slightly where I can move it again. There we go. Okay, perfect. Take my flame away. All right, let's see. Let's see if that did what I needed it to do. It now is free moving. That's my little technique on how you can save your links so that you don't have to cut it off and uh, make another link and retry.
So we have five out of 23 inches complete. It's looking really good. All of the links have been pretty easy to form. I think I got this soldering thing down. There are obviously some spots that I am gonna have to go back over when I am getting close to being done. Like here, you can still see the divot where I connected them um, on that side. So I am gonna have to go back in some places and flow the solder a little bit more, but it's looking pretty good. So we still have quite a bit left to do though, but we're making good progress though. So I'm hoping I can get to at least halfway done tonight so that tomorrow leaves the other half and by Thursday or Friday, I will have it completely done so that I can get it polished up, packaged and ready to gift to my boyfriend. Okay, I'm very tired. So I'm just over halfway through, or I'm actually over halfway through. Over halfway through, so I'm hoping I can finish the rest tomorrow and start working on my launch trailer. I'm really excited. I'm really hoping that this launch does good. I'm really hoping. It's gonna be a little heartbreaking if it's not, but what can you do? Um, anyways, I wanted to show you where, show you guys where I had left off um, and where we will be starting tomorrow. Very happy with the progress. Everything's turning out really good. Um, it's not as crappy as the first one that I made and it's not as annoying to make as the first one that I made. So, yeah. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow and let you know where I leave off. Good night. <laughs> All right guys, update. We are soldering the last link. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. All right, so I'm putting that flux on. My torch is starting to mess up and it doesn't turn on anymore. I have to kind of do that, whatever that's called. We have our chain fully soldered. Loving, like absolutely loving how it's looking. It does look disgusting right now, obviously. Uh, I need to go into every individual link and just file down where I said soldered because I did use a little too much solder on a lot of links. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure it definitely was durable and strong. So I will be twisting it. Um, basically, you just twist it as hard as you can with some pliers and everything, and the more you twist it, the more it flattens out. And once it's completely flattened, it'll look a lot more like a Figaro chain. So I'm just gonna go ahead and file up all of the individual links just a little bit and get um, really up close in detail and make sure they all look really good. I was kind of worried I wouldn't get this done in time for our anniversary, because it is this Sunday, and I am going up to Tennessee this Sunday, but um, it is now Thursday, it's Thursday night. So I didn't know if I was gonna get it done in time, but I have it done in time, or at least I will. It's not fully yet, but you know, we'll get there. <laughs> Instead of pickling it first, I think I am gonna go ahead and start filing it now before I pickle it because with the dark coloration, it really helps me see where the spots are that I need to be sanded down and filed and stuff because the solder has a little bit of a yellower, has a little bit more of a yellow color than the um, silver. So I'm gonna leave the dark spots on for now. I'm backtracking. I know I literally just said that I was going to file it down and everything like that, but the last time I made a chain, some of the links would bust open and break like after I'd already like done all of the sanding and stuff. And so I had to re-solder it and then re-sand it. So I am going through and just like already twisting it pretty much and just getting it to make sure that the shape fits nice and that all of the links are soldered well to where they're not gonna bust open again. Um, and then I'm gonna go in and file it down 
and clean it up and stuff. I just wanna make sure that the links aren't gonna bust open like the last one. Um, so I am just doing that now. Okay, update. I threw it in the pickle pot to get any other residuals out. Now I'm just going in. Now I'm just going in with my steel wool and just kind of uh, making that beautiful shine. Going in on both sides and doing this. Just rubbing it against it. Giving it a smooth, nice look all the way around. And I'm gonna go in with my polishing compound. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's definitely not perfect, but I am happy with how it's turned out. I'm hoping to improve in the future. And this was really fun. I definitely can tell how much I've grown from my first chain. So, not, a, not as bad as the first one. Um, so that's good at least. And I'm just flipping it over to do it on the other side and make sure that it looks the same. So for beginner jewelers, I got a pack of extra fine steel wool from Walmart for like dirt cheap. So this is an amazing tool. If you don't have any money to get a rotary tool and you just need a, a polished up look, a brushed up polished look, just get one of these and, and a polishing cloth. I Trust me, I, use, I used to use this on all my wire wrap designs. This thing works so good. It's such a handy tool, especially if you need, you know, if you just can't afford to get the really expensive rotary tool or the polishing compound and road, like all that kind of stuff, get this and a polishing cloth and you should be good starting out. I'm telling you, this thing works great. It's almost like using like a super fine sand, sandpaper kind of, that's pretty much what it is. It's just like really, really thin, um, you know, it's, it's steel wool. So it's like strips of steel that's wadded up and it's like kind of sharp a little bit. So it just catches on it and it just rubs it out and it kind of just like scratches out all of the scratches, if that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense with me speaking. I'm not really explaining that very well, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Look at all that grodiness. That's just the residuals from this. I kind of just pick it up with it. Um, you know, I have a, a vacuum I use usually after every um, every time I work at my bench, so kind of just push it on the floor. <laughs> See, and that already makes it look like it's polished up, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna go in with my polishing compound just to give it that extra layer of shine. But I'm telling you, this thing works so great. If, if you really cannot afford a rotary tool or anything like that, truly this like this really takes your stuff to the next level um, to where you don't necessarily need a rotary tool to polish up your stuff or sand it down. Um, 
but I definitely recommend getting some steel wool. Fine, super, super fine, like the finest grit you can of steel wool. Because look how shiny that looks just from doing that. It looks like it's been polished. But I do love the shine that the polishing gives, so I am going to go in with that. Just a little extra step, you know what I'm saying? Clearly on one side, you can see how shiny it is. We have to do this side now. I don't know if it'll really show on camera. I can't see from here, but this side has been polished and then this side needs to be. I think for my second chain, um, first in the Figaro style, I don't think I did too bad. I'm putting props to myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue polishing up the other side. And tomorrow before I leave, I'll try it on, show you guys, and send you guys off to be making some Figaro chains of your own. Okay, back to it. I literally filmed this like four times and I realized that I wasn't in the right settings. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy this video. Um, I hope it helps you when you are trying to make some chains of your own. And yeah, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe if you do feel so inclined. I'm literally just about to leave to go to Knoxville to gift him his chain for our anniversary. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, very, very excited. Cannot wait to see if he likes it. I'm assuming he will. I'm hoping he will. <laughs> Um, I love it. If he doesn't like it, I'm wearing it for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed that and hope this information was helpful for you guys so you guys can make some Vigoro chains of your own. As always, like, comment, subscribe if you do feel so inclined. Um, if you have any prayer requests or questions, leave them down below in the comments. Hope you guys have a great week. God bless you and I'll see you when I see you next. Bye! Mwah.